From Our World in Data.org, Nuclear Weapons by Bastian Hur, Pablo Rosado, and Max Roser. This page was first published in August 2013 and last revised in February 2024. The world's nuclear powers have more than 12,000 nuclear warheads. These weapons can kill millions directly and, through their impact on agriculture, likely have the potential to kill billions. Nuclear weapons killed between 1,100 and 2,100 people when the United States used them against the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945. They've come close to being used again more than a dozen times since. This is why countries have worked to limit the proliferation and number of nuclear weapons. On this page, you can find writing, visualizations, and data on how many states have nuclear weapons, how many warheads they possess, how many oppose them, and how this has changed over time. For an overview of the risk of nuclear weapons and how they can be reduced, you can read the following essay, Nuclear Weapons, Why Reducing the Risk of Nuclear War Should Be a Key Concern of Our Generation. The consequences of nuclear war would be devastating. Much more should and can be done to reduce the risk that humanity will ever fight such a war. Few countries possess nuclear weapons, but some have large arsenals. Nine countries currently have nuclear weapons. Russia, the United States, China, France, the United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea. These nuclear powers differ a lot in how many nuclear warheads they have. The chart shows that while most have dozens or a few hundreds of warheads, Russia and the United States have thousands of them. And then the chart, estimated nuclear warhead inventories 2023. Strategic warheads are designed for use away from the battlefield, such as against military bases, arms, arms industries, or infrastructure. Deployed are those on ballistic missiles, submarines, and bomber bases. Retire are those queued for dismantlement. For, for deploy a strategic warheads, Russia has 1,674 and the United States 1,670. Then categories next come deployed non-strategic warheads, then non-deployed warheads and retire warheads. Below we have China, France, United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, Israel, and North Korea last. Data source, Federation of American Scientists 2023. And as a note, the exact number of countries warheads is secret, and the estimates are based on publicly available information, historical records, and occasional leaks. Warheads vary substantially in their powers. The chart also shows that the warheads differ in how and how quickly they can be used. Some are designed for strategic use away from the battlefield, such as against arms industries or infrastructure, while others are for non-strategic tactical use on the battlefield. And while some warheads are not deployed or even retired and queued for dismantlement, a substantial share of them is deployed on ballistic missiles or bomber bases that can be used quickly. Many countries have abandoned efforts to obtain nuclear weapons. The number of countries that possess nuclear weapons has never been higher. Only one country that had had them, South Africa, entirely dismantled its arsenal. But, as the chart shows, many more states have considered or pursued nuclear weapons, and almost all of them stopped. In the in late, late 1970s, more than a dozen countries considered them or pursued them by launching nuclear weapon programs, but almost all stopped. Only Syria has considered nuclear weapons recently, and only Iran has pursued building them.
the number of nuclear weapons has declined substantially since the end of, Cold, of the Cold War. After increasing for almost half a century after their creation in 1940s, nuclear arsenals reached over 60,000 warheads in 1986. Since then, we have seen a reversal in, of this trend as the chart shows. The nuclear powers reduced their arsenals a lot in the following decades, and the number of warheads fell below 20,000 in the 2010s. The decline has been slow since then, and the total stockpile still consists of more than 10,000 warheads. Some countries have also been expanding their arsenals. Estimated nuclear warhead stockpiles. Stockpiles include warheads assigned to military forces, but exclude retired warheads queued for dismantlement. The latter are only included in the total in the global total. The destructiveness of nuclear arsenal has declined. A simple count of the numbers of warheads has shown in the previous chart does not consider that these weapons differ in their explosive power. It also does not consider that not all of them can be used at once. The data shown in the following chart attempts to take this into account. It considers the destructiveness and deployment of nuclear warheads to arrive at an estimate of the explosive power of nuclear weapons deliberately in the first deliverable in the first strike. We see that the United States rapidly developed much more powerful warheads in the 1950s. The Soviet Union increased the destructiveness of its weapons more slowly but ultimately reached similar levels. The destructive potential of first strike warheads peaked at more than 15,000 MT in the early 1980s, this amounts to more than a million Hiroshima bombs. At this peak, first strike weapons could destroy more than 40% of the total urban land worldwide. However, the destructiveness of first strikes has been steadily declining for decades. For both the United States and Soviet Union slash Russia, yet it has been more than 2,500 MT with the potential to directly destroy almost 7% of the total urban land worldwide. Estimated explosive power of nuclear weapons deliver deliverable in first strike included are those nuclear warheads designed for use away from the battlefield, such as against military bases, arms, industries, or infrastructure, and that could be carried by ballistic missiles, bombers, or submarines. In a first strike, their explosive energy is expressed in equivalent megatons. We have Russia first, United States, followed by China, France, United Kingdom, Pakistan, India, South Africa, and the graphic is attached um, to the website. Again, as a note, the exact number of countries warheads is secret and the estimates are based on publicly available information, historical records, and experts' estimates. Nuclear weapons tests have almost stopped. The nuclear weapon states frequently tested their warheads in the past, but tests now have almost ended. The chart shows that they picked in 1962 at 178 tests, mostly conducted by the United States and the Soviet Union. This test harmed the environment and the people, especially indigenous communities. Tests decreased later during the Cold War and have been nearly absent in the last two decades. The only country that has recently tested nuclear weapons is North Korea. Nuclear weapons tests per year. We have North Korea, Pakistan, India, United Kingdom, China, France, Russia, and the United States. Again, the graphic attached to its website. And as a data source, the Arms Control Association 2023.
nuclear weapons have come close to being used a dozen times since World War II. After killing between 1,100 and 2,100 people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, nuclear weapons have come close to being used more, more than a dozen, dozen times again. The chart below shows a timeline of such close calls. We can see that some of them have been accidental, while others have been deliberate. You can learn more in our article on the risks of nuclear weapons. Then a timeline of close calls with nuclear weapons. Close calls are incidents during which nuclear powers came close to using their nuclear weapons, either accidentally, accidentally or deliberately. There is no complete list of close calls. Firstly, because it is always a question of where one draws the line for what should be considered a close call. Second, only a few Close calls are publicly known. Most publicly known close calls are events in the history of the U.S. military, and as the U.S. has to classify several relevant events, much less is known about close calls in Soviet and Russian history and all other countries that have nuclear weapons. The list of close calls below should therefore be considered to be only a likely small fraction of the total list of close calls. The list below is largely based on Toby Ord or the precipice. Several descriptions are direct quotes. He, in turn, largely relies on the U.S. Department of Defense. 1957, a nuclear bomb accidentally fell out of a bomber over New Mexico. The high explosive detonated but there was no nuclear explosion. 1958, a B-47 bomber accidentally dropped a nuclear bomb over South Carolina. It landed in Somers Garden, destroying their house. Fortunately, its atomic warhead was still on the plane. 1961, over North Carolina, a B-52 bomber broke up and two nuclear bombs fell to the ground. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara said that a single switch prevented a nuclear explosion. 1961, a B-52 carrying two nuclear bombs crashed in California. Neither bomb detonated. 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis is considered to the, clo uh, the closest the Cold War came to escalating into a full-scale nuclear war. A particular close call involved a Soviet submarine which got attacked by the U.S. Navy close to Cuba. The Soviet submarine had not been in contact with Moscow for several years and for several days, excuse me, and did not know whether war had broken out. The captain had made the decision to launch a nuclear torpedo, but in an ensuing argument, Vasily Archipop, or Archipop, and spell A R K H I P O V eventually persuaded the others to not launch a nuclear weapon. If the submarine had launched a nuclear weapon, nuclear war would have been likely. Archibald is often credited as the man who saved the world. 1965, near Japan, a fighter jet carrying a nuclear bomb fell off the side of a U.S. aircraft carrier. The bomb was never recovered. 1966, above Spain, a B-52 bomber crashed into a refueling plane in mid-air, four nuclear weapons fell out and two of the bombs suffered a conventional explosion. There was a substantial radiation and 1,400 tons of contaminated soil needed to be taken back to the U.S. In 1968, a B-52 bomber carrying four hydrogen bombs caught fire and crashed into the ice of Greenland. Luckily, this did not set off a nuclear reaction. Had it done so, all signed would have suggested incorrectly that this was a Soviet nuclear strike, which would have likely triggered nuclear retaliation. 1979, a large number of incoming missiles 
a full-scale Soviet first strike appear on the screens at four U.S. commander centers and respond intercontinental ballistic missiles ICBMs with nuclear warheads were put on high alert and nuclear bombers were prepared to take off for takeoff. Before any counterattack was launched, it was realized to be a false alarm. These screens have been showing a realistic simulation, simulation of a Soviet attack from a military exercise that had been mistakenly been sent to the leave computer system. 1980, in Arkansas, a 9 megaton warhead was propelled about 100 meters away in the explosion. Fortunately, its safety features kept intact. Kept it intact. 1983, the Soviet early warning systems show five ICBMs launching from the U.S. Stanislav Petrov, the officer on duty, reported it to his commanders as a false alarm. Petrov reasoned that it, was on, it is unlikely that the U.S. would launch a first strike with just five missiles and noted that the missiles vapor trails could not be identified. He was right. The false alarm turned out to be caused by sunlight glinting off clouds, which looked to the Soviet satellite system like the flashes of launching rockets. 1995, Russian radar detected the launch of a missile aimed at Russia. The warning was quickly escalated, escalated all the way up the chain of command, leading President Yeltsin to open the Russian nuclear briefcase and consider whether to authorize nuclear retaliation. It turned out to be a false alarm caused by the launch of Norwegian scientific rocket to study the northern lights. Russia had been notified, but word hadn't reached radar operators. In 2007, six nuclear armed cruise missiles were mistakenly loaded onto a B-52 bomber in North Dakota, for 36 hours, no one in the U.S. Air Force realized that six nuclear weapons were missing. U.S. General Habiger, or Habiger commented, I've been in nuclear business since 1966, and I'm not aware of any incident more deserving. Many countries want to limit or abolish nuclear weapons. Countries have sought to reduce the threat posed by nuclear weapons through international cooperation. Most countries have approached the partial and comprehensive nuclear test ban treaties which seek an end to nuclear weapons test. The same goes for the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, whose objective is to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons. Recently, dozens of countries have approved the Nuclear Prohibition Treaty, whose aim is to end the development and existence of nuclear weapons altogether. Then we see on the graph number of countries that approve of nuclear weapons treaties, countries that approve of the Partial Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, and the Nuclear Prohibition Treaty, which is the lowest.